Hello again and welcome back. Today we're going to tackle how to change the shell on a original Game Boy Advance. Uh, we recently released a video on doing the Game Boy Advance SP. Um, this one should be a little bit easier. The SP is not too bad, but this one doesn't have hinges to work with and we don't have to risk uh, destroying our knuckles in the process. Um, but this shell overall is not too bad of condition. There's, I'm not sure how well the screen will show up, but there's there's quite a few surface scratches on the screen. Um, some discoloration on some of the buttons and the sides. Some stickers on the back, that's not a huge deal. But uh, the big thing with these is if we turn it on to test it out, we'll see what happens here. Okay, this time it actually worked. Um, some of these, so this time it didn't. Or it did, but the power button is, is awfully flaky. It Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. What happens is the contacts on the power button uh, just kind of get old and dirty and slightly, um, maybe slightly corroded, and it kind of causes it to not make a solid connection. So sometimes you'll have to flip the power button back and forth um, to get it to work. And this time it didn't work, but eventually it kind of eased in and got some power. So, so while we're doing the swap of the the case on this, we'll go ahead and clean that power switch connection as well to to fix that a little bit. Um, and yeah, we will swap it out with a cool new, um, obviously aftermarket um, Venusaur um, case. We're not going to do the AGS 101 screen mod in this video. Um, I'm not sure if I'll end up doing one of those. Those are about 80 bucks for a screen or the screen plus the ribbon. And I probably won't play this much, if at all, because um, I've got a, some other stuff that I'll be sort of playing uh, these games on instead. So this is going to be more of kind of just for show. So I probably won't do that screen, but down the road, if there's a lot of interest, um, we might look at revisiting this later. But that being said, let's go ahead and swap the screen. Actually, while we're at it, let's test the game as well. Just make sure that the cartridge reads. And sure enough, it looks like it does. So that's good. So let's go ahead and begin the case swap. Obviously start out, start off by taking the batteries out. And we have, I believe it's six. We'll have six screws on the outside and these six are tri-ring screws here that will need to be removed as well as the seventh screw, which is a Phillips head screw right in there. So. Let's go ahead and just do the Phillips one now. And I'll probably use the new screws that came with this new shell, because some of these screws, this one's not too bad, but if we can see a lot of these, these screws are covered in some, something white. Hopefully that's not water damage on the inside, but if the new shell came with new screws, we'll probably use those, but I'll save these just in case. All six of these screws are actually the same length as well. So if you're going to reuse the screws or, or when you're looking for the replacement ones in the new shell, um, they're all the same except for the black Phillips screw down here. And once those are removed, this whole top will just come right off. And it doesn't look like so I don't believe there's any water sensors on this guy, but it doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape on the inside. So we are also gonna have our sort of side bumper pieces here that just sit in place. And then we have our shoulder buttons that'll have a little bit of a spring that kind of fits in place and keeps it, helps to actuate the, the buttons coming back out. But just lift it up and they'll slide right out. And here we'll have three, uh, in this case we'll have two um, Phillips screws that we'll need to remove. So there's 
one here and one here. And some of these models uh, may or may not have the third screw put in here. Um, I don't know why some do and some don't. In this case, it doesn't. Um, but there is, I don't know if I can get that on video, there is still a peg in there um, for that. So I don't know. I don't know why some of these don't have it, but we'll go ahead and just pull those out. Actually, go ahead and slide our power button out as well. And this is going to give us good access into the power switch here, which we can really kind of see some dust uh, build up around there. So that'll be good to just take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and clean that up. And just like most of these other consoles, we can't just take the board straight up and out because it is attached to the LCD on the front. So the easiest way to get this out is we'll have our two latches here, just like on the SP. Sometimes these come out easy, sometimes they're a little stuck in there. Don't put too much force, we don't want to break them. But just enough that they'll loosen that ribbon cable. And then, the whole thing should just slide right on out. And here we have the back side of the board, which isn't too bad. A little bit of dust on the speaker. I might hit that up with some rubbing alcohol as well. And if you have issues with the shoulder buttons, uh, now's the time. I believe these can come out. They're just kind of rubber buttons. You could pull them out and clean in there. Uh, the shoulder buttons are working okay on this one, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just set the board off to the side. And we'll have our buttons. Um, our case, our new case comes with these as well, so I really don't need to pull these out. but can make it a little bit easier to get the screen out by not having these in place. And now the screen is going to be attached with some double-sided sticky tape. Uh, sometimes these are easy to get off, sometimes they're a little bit harder. Usually if you kind of kind of wiggle it a little bit, kind of loosen up some of that tape. Obviously not putting torque on the screen itself. Just kind of loosening up the corners just a little bit. And then see if we can get our spudger underneath. In this case, the sticky tape kind of, we'll go ahead and reuse this for the new, the new, um, the new shell. So I'll just grab tweezers. Everything back into alignment. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and start a little bit of the reassembly process before I work on cleaning that. Before I work on cleaning that power switch, so that way I can keep the dust pretty free. So since we're not using a 101 screen, this will just slide right on in there. Oops. Okay.
I have a few goodies left in here. Lower power button will drop in. And our A and B button are keyed. fit in there and our light diffuser Oops. put that in there the right way And then we'll install our start and select buttons. Just sit right over there, over that tiny little peg. And now our D-pad cover. as well as our A and B button covers. Oops. And again, everything's keyed one way, so you'll quickly realize if you don't have it on the right way. I kind of feel like there's a little bit of interference here on the side button, but I'm not sure if that's just part of the cheaper aftermarket kit or not. So, let's go ahead and take our power switch here, and we'll go ahead and just clean up that. And that's again, that's pretty easy. We'll just take a Q-tip and get it a little extra wet, because then we can. Dribble a little bit of it in there. And then work the power button back and forth. I think that'll be okay. And with that, We should be able to get underneath the ribbon cable. We're going to go ahead and use the new screws this time. Do something a little different. And we'll start with just one screw. Start by securing the board. Into position. Ribbon cable should, there we go. Let's get it in there straight. And then at that point, push our locking tabs back in. And we are almost done. So next up, we have our power button that will simply slide on where it needs to go. And we'll 
the battery cover off the new case and push it together. Go ahead and put on the battery cover Phillips screw again. Then finish off with the six. Oh, actually, <laughs> looks like this replacement case, they're all Phillips screws. So. And there we have it. And of course, I put one fingerprint right in the middle of the screen. No big deal. And lastly, so for this one, we don't have a glass screen protector. We have a nice or a cheap plastic one that came with it, but it'll look nice for what we what we're doing with it. and drop it right into place. And got to get the last, since this is the plastic one, it also comes with a, a front little shipping protector. There it goes. Throw some batteries in it. And button it up. And of course, we also need to put on our AGB001 unofficial sticker. And there is going to be a little burr. This specific shell comes with a little bit of a plastic burr there. You could try to cut it or sand it down. Um, I think I'm just going to be okay with it. It's not a huge deal. Line everything up. And drop it right in. Oop. And of course the power is on, so... <laughs> Put the cap on my isopropyl alcohol. And let's try it out. We already saw that it worked, let's do it again. Perfect. And that power button is much, much more responsive. There's no dead spots in it, turning it on. Let's clean the screen once more. It works. Shoulder buttons are definitely bushy. Um, but yeah, there we have it. Um, overall, it doesn't have the greatest feel. I mean, there's there's some mushiness in the buttons. Um, I'm not sure if it's the membranes underneath. That's not quite as good. Let's just make let's make sure that all that's working again. I 
Obviously the A button's working. Start button's working, select button's working. So everything's working. It just has a bit of a mushy feel, but unfortunately that's what you're gonna get with an aftermarket shell. But overall, um, it looks nice. <laughs> I mean, I guess for me, that's that's the key, is that it looks nice. I wanted one that I could, uh, that would just look better than that plastic purple shell that was getting pretty beat up. So this will be great for a display now. And um, yeah, super happy with it. So. Short and sweet video, super fast, uh, super easy. Just wanted to give you a video that kind of would give you a bit more confidence if you were interested in doing this yourself. Um, again, if you are interested in, in AGS 101 screen swap, uh, feel free to just let me know. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's worth it to spend the 80 to 100 bucks to get all the parts for it, but if there's a lot of interest um, and you want you want to see that, let me know and, and we'll see if we can make that happen. So. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.